Welcome back to my Cork Bottle Steam Engine Build Diary. In this episode I'll be making the packing glands, which are the seals that go on the rods that go in the steam chest and into the cylinder bar barrel to support the piston. The kit is supposed to come with some brass, a uh, 27 30 second diameter for making these parts. I don't have that. I do have this bearing bronze that was bought for making the bearings, and it's the same diameter. So bronze is better than brass for steam, so I'm going to use this. If you're enjoying these videos, please click the like button and subscribe and enter your comments below. First I need to get a piece that's long enough to make the two parts from that I can hold in a collet in the mill. I'm going to turn it down to the final diameter first and then part it off. Turns out I probably should have turned it down to 5 eighths of an inch, which would actually fit a collet in my ER40 collet chuck, because I don't have all the collet sizes. But no, I went down to this diameter, which is 21 30 seconds, and that doesn't fit any of my ER40 collets. So, ER32 collet chuck. This is an MT2 taper chuck that I bought for the rotary table, and I haven't really used it in the mill. It's in a MT4 adapter here. And yeah, everything's fine. Just put it in, get it tightened up. and then go to face it off and turn it. Now, my camera mount here is still a bit shaky, but you can perhaps see what I could see there, which is the parts wobbling in the chuck. It is kind of hard to see with the camera wobble, but when I check it, I got like 10 thou run out on the part, which is completely useless. I would be better off just doing all of this in the three jaw. So, is it the part or is it the chuck? Is it the, well it can't be the part, I just turned that. Is it the collet or is it the chuck? Because I have poopy collets. If you watched uh, this old Tony's recent video, he talks all about poopy collets and I have some really poopy collets, but they were cheap and I'll buy good ones later. But the chuck seems to be okay on the outside. There's only two thou run out there, which would be acceptable for this. So, okay, maybe we need to check the collet. I thought I deburred this one, because they do need deburring. But uh, we'll see what happens. Here I'm trying to play around with indexing it and so forth, but eventually I give up and decide to look for poop. Oh, there's some poop. That's what collet poop looks like. Yeah, very poopy collet. So, cleaned all that up, and uh, the triangular file and stuff, but it, it didn't make a blind bit of difference. I'm saying there it's better, it's maybe 2,000 better, it's still 10,000. So we check the run out on the inside of the taper of the chuck, and that's where the 10,000 is. And when we compare that to the outside of the chuck, it's not on the outside. So this, this chuck is not concentric to itself. It, it's a piece of garbage. So, yeah. So, moving on. Uh, rather than futzing around trying to put it in the three jaw, I'm going to have to go to the mill anyway. So, we'll just do all these operations in the mill. And this is a square collet block, so I can square up against the uh, sides of the collet block here. I really don't have room for my wiggler here. It is actually damaging the wiggler uh, when it spins out like that. But we do our initial sander hole. I actually did, there's two parts here, one on each end. I'm just showing film from parts of each one. Uh, so we center drill uh, the hole in the center. And then we drill that down to depth, which is through where the part is going to be and into where the cutoff is going to be. So it's about 20, 240 thou is how deep we go. And the two parts have a different center hole diameter and a different outside diameter on the boss. But this is just feeding down with the MPG, positioning with the with the CNC and then feeding down with the MPG. And we bring in our mill. So this is the other part here. 
And this is what I have to go through every time I have to uh, set my tool and I have to swap in and out tools all the time. So this is a carbide end mill broken one, which is an accurate 0.125. And I just move up the part until I'm able to get it under. And then I set that to 0.125 and I have a button on the MPG that does that for me. So that's, that's efficient. So now we get into what we should have been doing in the lathe, but we're doing it in the mill. And this is the G code for this, which is run up by hand. So the first line is just initialization stuff, tells it it's not a lathe, turns off all the compensation stuff, tells, tells us we're in G54 space. And we set a couple of variables. Now notice here, we don't have to put in decimals, we can put in fractions here. Uh, G95 F02 tells us we're gonna feed at 2,000 per RPM. M3 S3000 starts the spindle at 3000 RPM. It's actually just an on-off switch. I have to do the belt separately. And then the two G0s take us to our initial position, first in X and Y, and then down in Z. And then uh, we go to Z0, which is the top of the stock with a G1. And then we start setting our radius. So uh, 0.15 is my initial distance out, plus the tool radius. Um, and then uh, we go to there in Y, and then we do a G3 with three turns, um, anti-clockwise, so we are conventional milling, and then we do a, and we're spiraling down. And then the G2 is a final pass in a clockwise direction, which is climb cutting, which cleans it up, it both cleans up the bobbin and the spiral and takes off the burrs. Um, and then we go back up to our zero. And we're doing three separate passes here at reducing diameters and the final 0.153 uh, over 2 the 0.153 is the diameter on the plan so that should give us our outside diameter for that uh, and then we just exit the part and turn off the spindle and turn off the spindle and then exit the part that's what all that's about so that is not using CAD software CAM software to write the G-code, that's just writing a code. I, I write scripts for managing servers and I've been doing it for decades. So this is, other than being a new language, it's pretty much straightforward stuff. And if you're used to setting up machines manually uh, with all the complicated tool setups you can have, you can definitely learn this stuff. One of these parts has a circular base, the other one has uh, two ears essentially uh, so we have to machine out that and it's a diamond shape that's specified on the plan so we have our setup here our, we know our narrow vertex is 0.125 and we have a 15 degree angle so we can figure out the X and Y dimensions of our diamond and here we're using the G42 which does cutter compensation so it knows it's an eighth inch diameter cutter so it's I program in the diamond that I want and it figures out that the tool has to be offset and it goes around the profile to make sure it cuts the right stuff. Very cool that you don't have to figure that stuff out yourself. And here it's, there's, again, there's two passes here and it cuts the diamond profile. And that's all there is to that. And that's the end result. Pretty cool, eh? So, sorry about the camera angle here. Uh, I'm still working on my camera mount. So I have a much more steady one for the mill using inch and a quarter steel. So that's pretty rigid now. But for the uh, lathe views, uh, it's still kind of wibbly plastic mounts that come with the GoPro. So. I'll be figuring out something better for that soon. So it's hard to see what I'm doing there, but uh, catching the part when it comes off. And there it is. T 
teeny tiny things from a very well, relatively very big machine. And that's the end result. The two parts uh, with uh, some coinage I found in the parking lot for scale. See you next time.